Hello, you delightful dandelions. My name is Mark DiPoli. Welcome to episode three of the Blacktown Premier League podcast. Let's go straight into the preview. What's happening in today's episode? For our team focus is just to try to um, have less goals conceded on us this season, which is why, like, no cap, I got signed. So this is why, like, if you attackers think you're going to score this season, you might have something else coming, you know, so... Yes, the champions have regrouped, but it's always hard to back it up. Can they? Well... You can be the judge today when you get to watch them in a couple of fresh faces as well and see if they've got the bark to match the bite. Cue the intro music. Before we do that though, we'll go through some results of course and look at the fixtures. And we'll do that while we look at some highlights from the first match of the round of the season. If you do enjoy the highlights while talking through the results from the weekend, please do leave a like, do share with your teammates, do subscribe if you are new around here, we're on the road to 1.5k, and if we hit 15 likes, I'll be eternally grateful. In the match of the round, which has just come on your screen now, Duneside ran out three new winners against Quakers Juniors in the Ryan Dimmick Memorial Cup. Marion, as you're about to see in this week's interview, beat Ropes Crossing 6-2 with two goals from Player of the Year winner Kelvin Afori, as well as another brace for brand new signing Patrick Halocker, formerly from Glenwood Redbacks. Ahmed Badat also picked up Ropes two goals as he competes for that golden boot once again. Rivo handed Eastern Creek a 2-1 shaped L in the first round in a result that certainly surprised the competition, including myself. Happily so, though. Good to see Rivo, a big club back, doing some good stuff. Mightily impressed with their efforts, I am. Despite having 10 men for the last 30 minutes, Pons bested workers 3-1. Byron Grandemanger's hat-trick secured a 3-2 win over old rivals Prospect, as Quakers Hill Tigers have started exactly how they wanted to, having been promoted from PL2 last year to PL1 this year. Oakville bounced back with a mightily important three points against Rudy Hill, while Town Rangers and St. Pats played out a brilliant game, certainly the best and most entertaining of the round, three all in that one. In the Red Derby, no, that's not really a real name, I've just given it to them for the sake of the laughs, Polonia also picked up their first three points of the year, leaving Glenwood at the foot of the ladder after round two. Park Lee, according to reports, couldn't get past a very resilient Newbury backline and goalkeeper, the points shared and a goal apiece in that one. So the fixtures now, well, there's none as Marcus Correa's goal finds the bottom right-hand corner. Hello and welcome back. It's Easter this weekend, so be sure to like if you like Easter. Right, let's get chatting to the defending champions, Mariong Football Club. Consider this Mariong's very own version of the Ins and Out podcast. The defending champions are top of the lots after just the first rounds, but we're going to find out if they're up for another title charge indeed. Thanks for joining me, Arrow. First time on the podcast, of course, to Shiar and to Kelvin. Gee, I'm going to throw straight to you straight away. 8-0, 6-2, 2-0 wins, lots of goals scored, very little conceded. Across all three grades, you can pick whoever you want. Who really stood out for you on Saturday? I mean, look, all three grades had a really fantastic game. 21s kicked off really well. Rezies as well kept a clean sheet. And first grade to finish the game 6-2. Couldn't ask for better points, you know, it's nine points or three wins, sorry. Out of all three grades, I think probably Rivaldo had a good game. Kelvin, Kelvin had a really good game. Also, Patrick had a really good game as well. So, there was, as a unit, there was a lot of people that actually standing out in the field. But I think overall, probably would have been um, Kelvin and Patrick, our new signing. All right, welcome to the Blacktown Comp, my friend. Thanks for coming on to the podcast as well. You've played at some very good local nearby NPL clubs in your time. You've just come off the back of winning the African Cup of South Sudan. What brings you to the Blacktown Comp? Um, basically, there's just a beautiful community that Blacktown competition has always had. Um, this beautiful team as well, like she was, was one of our managing coaches for South Sudan as well. So his leadership that he contributed with South Sudan just really brought me back over to Black Ten and made, like really joined Marion and solidify our team. Very well said indeed. I'm sure the invoice will come through at the end of this episode. Um, now this was going to be sent to Kev, but Kev has not turned up. So Shia, you get to do this one again. A lot of the boys from Marion have barely had a moment to rest in the last 12 months between All-Stars and African Cup and the league and the finals. The, even for you guys as coaches, not a lot of rest mentally. You've been on the go for a while, especially with how much I asked you to do during the All-Stars. So there's a couple of, of, of new boys. So talk to me about keeping the squad fresh, keeping the motivations fresh and how have you sort of gone about managing that, planning that? Yeah, look, it was, it's been a very, very long season. Even the season just started for us, but straight after our um, season finished, winning the grand final, then 
going straight into African Cup as well, and then dealing with All Stars after. You know, it's all it's all for the experience, and it's been it's been a great uh, great pleasure being part of that. Obviously, with our team for this year, you know, like you said, we did bring some new faces as well. Um, there's great talent out there, and it's, our aim and goal never changes throughout the season. It's always to be the best in the comp or try to be at the highest level as we can. We've got other tournaments as well, like the Cotton Cup, State Cup. So as a club, we try to do our best to go as high as we can and achieve as much as goal as we can. Kelvin, back off to the Hawkesbury uh, tomorrow night for the Australia Cup. Best of luck to you guys representing Blacktown, of course. You obviously played them in a pre-season match just a bit before the All-Stars match. What do you sort of remember about them and uh, what are you expecting this one to be like tomorrow? They're a well-organised team. They obviously have their tactic and game plan that they executed quite well against us. I mean, pre-season, obviously, boys, a few new boys in the team still trying to understand how we play with each other. Um, I think it's gotten better, so it should be a little bit more of a closer showdown. Um, and I think pre-season will also... Fitness was a bit of an issue. Um, obviously, we didn't have some players coming off the bench, so I felt like it will probably be a little bit more of a more indication of where we're at this second time around, and should be a good match. Um, Arrow, you come into this competition, and teams have I can I can inform you that teams have really recruited in attacking areas this year. I think personally, from my own perspective, that the comp will be won at least in the league season on who has you know the tightest defence. Um, is there anything that you've sort of viewed or, or heard from, from the boys about what the competition's like, some of the good teams out there? Which game are you looking most forward to playing? Like, I look forward to playing all our games, realistically, just getting out on the pitch with all the boys and building that team bond. For our team focus is just to try to um, have less goals conceded on us this season, which is why, like, no cap, I got signed. So this is why, like, if you attackers think you're going to score this season, you might have something else coming, you know? So, like, like I said, our goal is to decrease our goal um, scored against us and increase our goals scored for us, you know. And that also starts from our back line to our midfield to our forwards, you know, vice versa. Straight to the point, that's how we like it. Uh, obviously, we know of a couple of players that, that have left. I mean, you know, Nico's final touch in Premier League football was basically getting the grand final winning assist. So we, you, you have said goodbye to a couple of players, but there are some new ones in. I mean, Patrick, as we spoke about, has got two goals on his debut. Pons have got this issue as well and they've spoken about it. They have basically two teams that want to play first grade, but only 11 players can start each week. How do you manage the fact that you've got more than 11 players who are capable of starting? How do you manage that, plan to rotate that, and, and keep all of them happy? Tough question. Um, look, we've got 32 boys. Honestly, they're no different from each other, like talent-wise, hence why the results show from the previous years, you got the reserve grade making the finals all the time, majority of the time, and first grade as well. So we, myself and Kev, we all, we're all trying to alternate as much as we can, um, whether it's for a cup game or throughout the season, because once you get through mid-season, you start to get players getting injured or leaving for holidays or, you know, family issues and stuff. You know, that's that's mine and Kev's homework to do each, each game, depending on who we're playing against and what tactics to do. Um, but like I said, depending on who we're playing on that game on the day, then if it's for example like the tougher teams like Ponds, Dunside, and other teams, then you know it's a little bit different to how we actually tactically do our homework for the other teams as well. But no, no disrespect to any other team, but it's just the tactics do change. Our aim is the same. We're not going to change. And our, if anyone can, you know, beat us, good luck to them. But we're not going to be easy. We're not going to be. We only get better and better each year. So good luck to every team. <laughs> Kelvin, I want to actually throw one more your way. Obviously, last year was such, such a success. I just want to know, in in perhaps just one sentence, can a repeat of last year, or even going a step further, can it be done? Of course, it can be done. Um, is it going to be difficult? I think it'll be harder. I think that the competition has gotten better. Some better players, um, some new players. So I think that challenge is going to make it a little bit more difficult for us. We've also got in some new players, which is good, but um, yeah, definitely can be done. And I think we have the squad to be able to do that. Very well said. Mariong, very experienced. We've seen them the most on the, match of the matches of the round in years gone by, so everyone knows how they play. The question is, can they stop it? Boys, thanks very much, especially you on your first time on the podcast. Well done. Appreciate it, Appreciate it very much. Thank and thank you for being here as well. Probably the most amount of smack that Mariong have ever talked in my three years of doing this podcast. And to be honest, it was still pretty remarkably reserved considering how good they are. Top of the table again in all three grades. Some not quite top because of goal events, but a really, really impressive start as they defend. 
defend their club championship as well, don't forget. They are certainly looking like a well-oiled machine once again, but to be honest, the trend does say that in the last five years of the Premier League, dating all the way back to 2017, where Duneside did 2015, 16 and 2017 in a row, obviously back in 2018, Quakers Juniors went on that miraculous run to win from fifth the grand final that was, then Pons won in 2019 under Brad Attard, but then of course we had the COVID cancel year, Marion won one as well, and Duneside then picked up 2022 when I was commentating that game, and then of course Marion picked up their one here in 2023, and now 2024, can they go back to back? Recent history says no, but Blacktown Premier League football has always been about defining long-standing eras, are they about to start theirs? I'm not sure. You let me know in the comments. Either way, it is going to be incredibly hard to do so, which to the neutral viewer that you might be, that's an awesome prospect on the horizon. It is going to be hard because there are so many competitors for that top spot, so many teams who play different brands of football, some which suit certain pitches, some which suit versing different types of teams. Either way, I can't predict it. I don't want to. I'll leave it up to the football gods themselves. That's the end of the episode today. Thank you for tuning in to episode three of the Blacktown Premier League podcast. My name is Mark DePaul. It always has, is, and will be. Please like the video if you've liked what you've heard or seen. The highlights package is a new thing as well. as not just goals, but it's actually highlights from the game. Also, if you just like this beautiful face as well, do leave an extra like. Subscribe on the road to 1.5K we are. Happy Easter if you do celebrate. Thank you so much for watching to this point of the video. And I'll see you guys next week. Cue that outro music. Mm -hmm.